Good morning again. The March 14, 2024 audit committee is now called to order. Before we get started, we need to make certain findings on the record regarding the necessity for conducting this meeting by electronic participation without a physical quorum present. Uh, wrong paper. Okay. Uh, in accordance with Tennessee Anna Code Annotated Section 84410B2 uh, is chair of the audit committee of the following facts and circumstances in support of a finding of necessity for the Board of Trustees Audit Committee to conduct this March 14th 2024 meeting without the physical physical presence of a quorum. The audit committee is scheduled to take up important committee matters which require timely action by the committee including but not limited to receiving a report on internal and external audit items and reviewing outstanding audit issues. Participation by electronic means is necessitated by members in person's absence due to unavoidable travel issues. Accordingly, I move that the committee find that participation by a quorum of the committee members by electronic means of communication is necessary. Is there a second? Uh, yes, Attorney Secretary Pelton, what's wrong? <laughs> I apologize. We do have a physically present quorum with you and Pinnock. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Okay, fine. Okay, so we will suspend with this. Not overlooking you, uh, Trustee. Uh -huh. Pinnock, okay, I'm sorry. So we will suspend with that because we don't have to establish it by electronic means since we do have a quorum that is here. And we have another committee member, I think, on the line, which is Trustee McKenzie. Okay. All right. At this time, we need to call the roll. Secretary Pendleton, please call the roll. Trustee Cole. Here. Trustee McKenzie. Present. Trustee Pinnock. Present. We have three present. Okay. Um... All right, committee members, if you, hmm? committee members, if you cannot hear us speak to the other committee members or board members, please state so now. If for each committee member participating electronically, please identify any individuals who are present in the location for which you are participating. The next item on the agenda is the approval of November 16, 2023 audit committee meeting minutes. The minutes of the audit committee November 16, 2023 meeting are included for your review in the board materials for the March 14, 2024 board meeting. I move from the audit committee to recommend to the full board the approval of the November 16, 2023 audit committee meeting minutes as contained in the board materials for the March 14, 2024 board meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? The question is on the motion to recommend to the full board the approval of the November 16, 2023 Audit Committee meeting minutes as contained in the board materials for the March 14, 2024 board meeting. Secretary Pendleton, please call the roll. Trustee Cole. Present. Trustee McKenzie. Present. Okay. Trustee Pinnock. Present. Okay. Three the hours. motion is approved. Uh huh. Okay, the next item on the regarding this audit committee agenda is included in your board materials for the March 14, 2024 board meeting. I'm asking President Glover and Director of Internal Audit, Dr. Renee Forbes-Williams and other designated personnel to provide pertinent information related to the agenda item. This is an informational uh, discussion item, so no vote is required. Uh, Dr. Uh, Fort Williams is up here now. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Starting on page 30, details of the external audit. External audit, draft of the statewide single audit for the year ended June 30, 2023. Um, currently, the information in this audit is deemed confidential, and this item has been moved to the executive session. Starting on page 33, details of the internal audit report. First, we have the audit of the president expenses. We didn't have any findings, and this is in compliance. 
the audit expense report for the period ending June 30th, 2023 to comply with code Title 49, Chapter 7. President's salary benefits and other payments, 499482 Travel, which is noted on Schedule A, starting on page 33, 3309 Business, meals, and hospitality, Schedule B, 23605 Other expenses, 33640 Other expenses relating to the President's office, total 382076 Total expenses, 942142 Again, no findings. We find that to be in compliance. Any questions? Okay. On page 38, in compliance with policy 01-07, conflict of interest disclosure forms, we have a total of 151 employees listed. Our submission rate, which you'll note on table one, for the initial reporting date, October 23rd, 2023, we had 740 submitted, which was 48 percent. December 31st, 2023, we had 1,053 submitted, 69.4 percent. As you notice on table two, conflict of interest form review, 854 no disclosures. We had disclosures of 135. We had 23 forms with no signatures, and we had 41 forms that was incomplete, and that totals to 1,053. That's on page 38, starting on page 38. Can, can I inquire, uh, and I don't know who to inquire to, um, why we're having trouble with people filling out these forms and signing these forms? Does anyone know? 69% submission rate. And that with, is a concern. With, 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 accurate, with accuracies being an issue. Well, I, thank you, uh, uh, Trustee Johnson, for that comment. And, and, and um, Dr. Forbes, we, when we talked, you know, we talked about what had been done. Would you please give an update to Trustee Johnson on steps that have been taken? Um, you know, it's, I, I don't think we could possibly read the minds of why individuals don't do what they should do, but I think you need to inform the Board of Trustees what steps have been taken and what the, um, uh, what, what measures will be taken to hold individuals responsible. Okay, permission has been granted by the Chair for Ms. Cynthia Howell to discuss that further. Good, ma good morning, Chairman Coles, President Glover, and the members of the Board of Trustees. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for your question. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to make my first presentation in front of the board on something I'm very passionate about, and that's ethics and the conflict of interest forms. You know, although we've been concerned about the submission rate of the, com of the conflict of interest forms, which over recent weeks has led to discussion of automating the form itself, I contend that the low submission rate is only a symptom of a flawed process. See, many organizations refer to the COI form as the form that must be completed each year, and when the submission rate gets to a certain level, then we check the compliance box that it's done. However, just like with any business or government agency in terms of operations and risk, we have to ensure that the decisions made at TSU are not influenced by the private interests of faculty, staff, or even the Board of Trustees. Thus, it's imperative that all individuals connected financially to TSU or making decisions on behalf of TSU disclose financial interests and or potential conflicts. So I actually contend that the COI process should be viewed in three phases. The first phase is campus awareness, second is submission and collection, and the third is the review and resolution of disclosures. Under campus awareness, I think we should embark on a marketing 
or awareness campaign explaining why completing the form is actually necessary. And additionally, many individuals may not understand the specific questions on the form and they simply leave one or more of the questions blank. We should equip employees with information about each question so that they understand the importance and feel comfortable that they are truthfully answering each question. Now the second stage is submission and collection process, which is currently a nightmare. Our current manual system of distributing the form via email and receiving back scanned forms that are returned as either PDF or some people don't have access to a scanner, so they take the pictures of the pages one by one and sometimes you get them upside down. But, um, so it's, it, it's difficult. So for the, 23, the 2023 submissions, I had to manually review all 1,053 files submitted and then rename them using a standard naming convention for ease of use and in case people like you, Dr. Johnson, have a, a, additional inquiries. In essence, we had to create our own repository of forms. So stage three is actually review and resolution of the disclosures. And in this part of the process, this is part of the process we actually really never complete. Although we examined 1,053 forms and we marked whether a disclosure was made, about 64% of them, which Dr. Um, Forbes already said, were incomplete or did not have a signature. There are 113 disclosures, and according to our policy, um, they must go to the review committee, which in our policy is actually the internal auditor's office. And this part of the process um, has not been complete. I don't think we have records of that this has actually been completed, um, at the, the review and resolution of disclosures in recent years. So we're recommending that we actually um, automate the process from the, the three phases, from awareness, to review so that we're reducing the errors and we're streamlining the tracking and reporting of disclosures. And many colleges and universities have upgraded their systems using an off-the-shelf software such as Navex. And we had the opportunity to see a demo. Um, we had the IT, people from IT, the internal auditor, and myself, which handles all three phases. And I'm not going to go through all the features, but um, you know, people can people will not be able to submit unless it's completed and there's a signature, um, you actually can collaborate, the reviewers can actually collaborate through the software, so you don't even have to have a meeting. You can actually set it up so it goes to the person's email box and you can review and sign off. And it, it can automatically send alert to individuals who have not completed the form, similar to the way that we're doing our training modules. And as a side note, there's also a separate policy development and coordination module that we probably need that can serve as a repository for all the policies that we do at the university, and it can map the policies and the paragraphs to spe specific compliance standards to actually assist us with um, certifications and audits. So I understand that there are financial implications, and I'm not trying to sell the software to the, to the board of directors today. I'm just asking that we ex actually explore the option as best practice, and perhaps um, uh, we, it's my hope that we could at least consider it as an option, and as a first step, allow the proposed risk management council to view a demonstration of the system and its capabilities along with other possible options and then make a recommendation. And lastly, um, I'm going to put in a pitch for risk management. I contend that all employees at TSU bear some responsibility for monitoring our risk and our internal controls. And I think all of us need to start thinking strategically and working collaboratively, especially when it comes to our back-end systems. And so it's my hope that we can begin building even more uh, risk-conscious community that supports um, and creates an effective process to identify, measure, and control risk. And I probably told you more than I should have, but that concludes um, my report, Dr. Forbes and Dr. Clinton. Uh, thank you. Dr. Allen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is Doug Allen for those that are on the phone. Uh, Mrs. Howell and I had an opportunity uh, to really discuss uh, this software. This is another means for us to be able to automate more of our processes uh, and, and take some of that manual process out. So I am in support of being able to move forward uh, with this recommendation. Dr. Do Johnson. 
I didn't mean to open a can of worms here, but uh, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I did actually. And so, so thank you. No, um, we we plan. automating we these things that we have perpetual problems. So we can solve these easy. So Dr. thank you, uh, yeah. Attorney Johnson. Uh, I think the automation is great. Um, I think it's a great idea, obviously. But I also think that we need to think about this is so important for our findings, for our risk management, for everything. There needs to be some punitive repercussions for people not doing it in a timely fashion. Um, whether, you know, you get noticed, you need to do it 90 days, then 60 days, then 30 days. And if you don't do it, I bet you you have 100% participation if you don't get your paycheck. If, if I may. Uh, Attorney uh, Johnson, that's when I opened up this. I agree with you. That's what I said. What are we going to do to hold yeah, the like, I mean, responsible? I don't know what's allowed. Okay. But, uh, Dr. But, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah. Allen. If I may, uh, there have been times we've talked about holding people's paychecks for different reasons, right? Uh, example, not getting your leave report in, okay? By law, we can't hold somebody's paycheck, but we can lock them out of the system that would not allow them to get back in until they complete it. Automation is only as good as the people that are completing the process, okay? Uh, this will help manage the process, but people still need to be held accountable to do the process. Um, One of the things that we did also along the lines during COVID, remember, there were things, uh, provisions people had to uh, comply with, and they could not start their computer uh, without going through certain things. So there's the ability to go that route that really limits your ability to get onto your computer to, until you go to and you complete some of these forms on doing that. Because though it's our responsibility, it, it's, it's the person's responsibility to complete it, it's our responsibility to ensure that they're completed. So if, if we're not putting the, the safeguards in place to ensure that, either through technology, we got all this AI, I don't even know how it works, but can we, you know, I don't know, like I said, AI, lock their computer right. out. <laughs> yeah, can we can we do something? So, Because I think that a lot of times people just think it's another junk form, right? They don't understand the importance of it and the risk that it poses for these audits and some of the things we're going through with the legislature now. These findings are critical because it shows the institutional controls. So we've got to do something oh. to be more on top of that. Trustee Pennock. Uh, just one minute, uh, Trustee Lewis. Chair Pennock was next. Just one minute, please, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm so happy that we have a risk manager that's doing exactly what the risk manager should be doing, and that's working globally across all functions to make sure that things are, are decently in order, uh, however difficult that might be. Trustee Lewis? Well, you know, it seems to me that there ought to be a policy set by this board as it relates to this matter. Well, I don't see how we can hold the auditors or the vice president of finance without having some type of policy from this board of trustees as it relates to the items or the people not that have not completed this. Uh, yes, Trustee Lewis, I understand what you're saying. I think, and, and, and I stand, please correct me if I'm in error, well, the policy is one that it must be completed. I think that in hearing what everyone is saying, you, Trustee Lewis, uh, and, and Trustee Johnson, is that I think from this board level what we would have to say, number one, is that I don't think we get into deciding the software. I think that's an administration issue because they know the funding that we have. I think this board has to set the policy that the, that we will not accept these types of return ratings anymore. They have to be done, and this board will have to say that there has to be a repercussion, as Attorney Johnson said, for not doing what you need to do. Now, from a legal standpoint, uh, you know, I don't know all what you can do. If we can lock them out of the system, we need to do that. But it is the responsibility of this board to make sure that we are instructing that the individuals must complete the forms. If they don't, there has to be a repercussion because just as uh, Attorney Johnson said, things like this blow up into major items on an audit report. 
So, Secretary Pendleton, you can tell me from a legal standpoint what we need to say right now to put in effect what we all just said. No, I mean, we've had that discussion, so I think that they're taking your direction from the comments that have been made about what needs to occur. We, you know, there, there is already a board policy that governs conflicts right. of interest. I think this is more about putting um, the measures in place, and I think there needs to be a report back to the board about the things that have now been put in place, including locking folks okay. out of their computer and things like of that nature to help um, comply. Got to keep in mind the computers are computers that are owned by the university, so um, the, we have the right to determine the use uh, of your work. Well, so I'm going employment. to ask that at the next board meeting you would bring us back steps on exactly what we're going to do. One to improve the rate, two, to hold the, the individuals responsible with punitive damages if they do not complete what needs to be done. I'll also make a note that just as the employees have to complete conflict of interest questionnaires, we do too as a uh, board of trustees. And, and so it's not just putting it on um, um, employees. This is our responsibility also. I am glad to say that we have done a good job this year of turning in our conflict of interest statements from uh, the Board of Trustees. So, uh, Dr. Forbes-Williams, I want to make sure that we are clear as to what we are expecting to be returned to us. I'm sorry, uh, Trustee Pennock, you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to go back to um, what the risk manager said. And what she said was we had a flawed process, in her opinion, and that here's a fix to the flawed process. So I, I think we need to give them an opportunity to fix it. Well, I, I so, agree with you, sir. I think, and that's what, if, and maybe I wasn't clear. I don't think the Board of Trustees is the one to determine we use A, B, or C software. We don't do that. I think what, we, what we're saying is fix it, okay? So if it takes a new software to do that, yeah. that's within the administration. We're holding the administration yeah. responsible for that. So that would be within that realm. What we're saying is when you come back to us, we would like to know what is being done, yeah. what has been done, not is what has been done to correct it, and what steps will be taken to hold individuals responsible for not uh, complying. Are we Did I miss something, Trustee Pinnock? If I did, please state. Okay, go on with your um, comment. Um, Richard Lewis again. Yes, sir. I appreciate what you said, Chair Cole, but I would like to just um, adjust your thought process. We need to hear at our next board meeting not only what is being done, but what has already been done. There should be no further delay. Yes, sir. You're, you're correct. I agree with you, sir. And if I did not state that clearly, I apologize. But that's what I, 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 that's what I was trying to say. Thank you so much for assisting me with that. As Trustee Lewis said, we do want to know what has been done to fix it. Is that correct, Trustee Lewis? That is definitely correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have also solicited um, Dr. Milton's skills to assist with this also. Her technical help. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Melton. Okay. Okay. Um, next internal audit, TSU Department of HR follow-up starts on page 42. The scope, July 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. We had three findings. Finding one, university management did not ensure that the employee and or the university representative completed all of the required sections of the I-9 form within the, within the required time frame. Prior period, out of 30, we had five that was incomplete, 17%. It is getting better. The current period, we have three out of 30, so we're at 10% at this point but 10% was still not completed in the required time frame. Am I correct that this is a homeland security issue also? Yes. Management comments, the high supervisor 
says she's not always notified when new employees start. She says she has talked and spoken with each of the hiring departments. However, this continues to be a problem. I'm sorry, would you repeat that, please? The HR supervisor, these are the management comments. She says she's not always informed timely when a new or potential hire has started in the department. Just for my benefit and everybody else may know, explain to me how you hire someone HR doesn't know it. That is a very good question in terms from internal audit standpoint. Maybe um, Dr. Allen, since this falls under his department, can further explain that? Yes. Dr. Allen, could you help me on that? Sure, please? sure. Uh, that is not proper practice uh, that you have someone start. Uh, it's a safety concern. It's a security concern. We have stressed multiple times to departments that they need to make sure that a person is properly vetted, that the background check has been completed. This is not an HR issue. It is a university issue, right? But it's, it, HR should receive that information in advance, not after the fact. Uh, each, each potential employee should have an employment contract on file, okay? And the background submitted at a minimum before they start. So this is continued communication between the departments and HR. I have a question. It's kind of a different, yeah, kind, of, different kind of question. Just one minute, uh, Trustee Martin. Uh, Trustee Pinnock is sure. speaking so, right now. So Just H one minute. HR reports to business and finance. Right? That is correct. Um, just hypothetically, why wouldn't it report to operations or something like that? Uh, HR reports to business and finance. Why wouldn't it say it report to operations? Well, I've had this discussion. I even had it with General Lee. Huh? I mean, General Lee. General Lee. 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 Oh, Lee. Lee. <laughs> it was the, it's, Turn my uh, mic on. We, we, we don't think it's broken. There are some things that need to be modified with it. We don't think it's broken, so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, comfortable moving it at the time. And so I looked at other models, and it's, it's with business finance. So I, I didn't think it was, a, it was, we should move it from where it is to, to somewhere else now. And that's the reason. If I may, uh, again, this is not an HR issue. It's, it's important to understand that we need departments, if they are looking to hire someone, that they reach out to HR. If you offer a person a job without having that employment contract on file or having their background check completed, that is nothing HR can do about that. That goes back to the communication between departments. Hey, Doug Allen is looking to hire a new accountant, right? Well, that process has to go through first. I would say through HR, we post the position, okay? In some cases, these positions may not even be posted, and, and folks are going out hiring individuals. So I want to be clear of where the problem begins. It is a university problem, but, but it's the, not. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's not a communication problem. What we're saying is you got to have safeguards in place where it can't happen. Listen, it's and, and so and yes. so you have to have fail safes. So yes. the, if you're relying on a department communicating, that's just a person. A person can make mistakes, they can forget. But if we put fail-safes in place with technology where basically this person cannot be hired or they cannot be given access to the TSU system until you have their contract uploaded, you have their, you know, all the things uploaded. I don't know how to do that, but this can't be that hard, though. It, it's not hard, but let me say this. Folks that are hired outside of the process, and this relates to individuals following the policy, okay? okay? Policy states that you should go through HR, all right? Now, they do not oftentimes have access to banner and things of that nature without having the forms on file, and, and our CIO can attest to that. So it's, they're here and their bodies are here, but they can't function within the system. Okay, yeah, but but we keep me... talking about policies. Right, policies exist just like laws exist. That's right. But it's our job to ensure that there are institutional controls there, where people don't have a choice to follow the policy or not. Right. That that I mean, of course, you might not be able to 100% get that done, mm -hmm. and you want to say to people, 
hey, follow this policy. But it's our job to ensure that there's no way not to follow the policy because our system is designed where if you don't follow the policy, mm -hmm. it won't let you get to the next step. Well, just, just one minute before you answer that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, before you answer that. Let me, let me uh, Trustee Martin had a comment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then... Yes, I, I just like to, to say, it, I disagree, it is an HR issue. Because nothing, no one should be able to get a check or anything without HR approving it. So, so just like uh, Trustee Johnson is saying, if you have policies and procedures in place, I understand that you're saying that people are not following it. But if a person can't get a computer, if they cannot get a paycheck, if it's certain things in place that they cannot receive until HR approves it, and that's the way it should be, HR needs to be the one that say, this, this, this has been done, and we are approved. Because bottom line, it's going to come back to HR when these people are working for Tennessee State University and receiving a check. So shame on us for saying that people are not following policy. There needs to be things in place where people cannot receive a check, cannot receive a computer, anything to begin working for Tennessee State University unless someone from HR pushes a button and says <clears throat> everything has been done and they are approved. Uh, may I take the chair's prerogative at this point in time? I, I want to, uh, this is a critical issue, and this is what I would like to say that I would like to see done. For the next board meeting, I would like for you all to bring back us a plan as to how, again, we fix this. How do we put the safeguards in place? What checks and balances we're going to put in place. We can sit here for the next 30 minutes and discuss whether it's this, that, or the other. We know, number one, there's a problem. What I'm asking to do is for the next board meeting, bring back what, as I'm going to use Trustee Lewis's words, what has been done and what will continue to be done. Okay? Yeah. If I may state on the record, there are mitigating controls in place. Okay. okay, well, Dr. Allen, I appreciate that. I'm just saying if there are, bring that back in the report. I understand what you're saying. The next board meeting, please bring back in the report what has been done and what will continue to be done. And also in that report, give us any information. If it was already in place, it was in place, and we're going to continue to do it, okay? Can we, if it's, is everyone okay with that? Thank you. All right. Um, mm. I forgot where I was now. Next finding. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Dr. Forbes Williams. Okay. Finding two. University management did not ensure that all employee performance evaluations for non faculty personnel were submitted to the TSU Department of HR. Out of 18 employees, well, out of 30 employees, 18, 60 percent mm. during the current <laughs> period was not submitted are not completed. In the prior period, we had 15 out of 30, 50 percent. So it went from 50 percent to 60 percent not being completed. What, what, repeat that, I'm sorry. Um, performance evaluations? This is for performance okay. evaluation for non-faculty personnel. Okay, let me just say before you go further, we do have the expertise of Trustee Martin, who is uh, has expertise in the, in, in the area, so I, I'm, I'm volatiling you, Trustee Martin. I'm sure that if you all need to reach out to her, she would be more than glad to assist in, in a manner that, that she can. I will, Trustee uh, Chair Cole. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Finding three pre-employment screening. Details of this finding is confidential. We'll be discussing executive session. Okay. This concludes this agenda item. All right. Is, do you have another report? 
Yes. Okay, just a minute. The next is that review of outstanding items is your next one. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is a review of outstanding audit issues. The materials for this agenda are included in your board materials for the March 14, 2024 board <coughs> meeting. I'm asking President Glover and Dr. Forbes Williams to provide pertinent information related to this agenda item. This is an information discussion item, so no vote is required. Dr. Glover or Dr. Yeah. Forbes Williams. Okay. Okay, initially submitted on page 47. However, permission has been granted to move this agenda item to the executive session. Okay. This completes this it agenda said item. We're moving all of these items to the <coughs> executive yes. session. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you for providing that information. Um, is there any additional business? Seeing none. Well, sure, uh, call. Yes, sure, sir. Call. Sir. I have a question. Uh -huh. The auditors from the state of Tennessee and other people who audit us, do they get a chance to read these reports by our internal auditor? Yes, sir. If they request them, they, yes, they have the right to read them. Yes, sir. That's correct. Am I, yeah. That's correct, sir. What if they don't request them? I uh, do they uh I mean what do you mean if, if if they request them we have to provide them uh they're finished is that your question sir No that's not my question I'm, I'm sorry just wondering whether or not the state auditors are reading the internal order reports are they concerned about what they're reading uh, Dr. Allen, I'm going to ask you to address this, sir. Uh, yes. As part of their audit, they do request the uh, report provided by the internal auditor. Okay. And, and so he said yes that they do, uh, Dr. Allen. I mean, yeah, Dr. Lewis. Okay. Um, I appreciate you giving me the answer. Okay. At this point in time, uh, if there's any additional business, seeing none, uh, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting to enter into the executive session for discussion of items deemed confidential under state law? So moved. Okay. Um, any dis uh, second, please? Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, the question is on the motion to adjourn the meeting to enter into the executive session for discussion of items deemed confidential under state law. Secretary Pendleton, please call the roll. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee McKenzie. Aye. Trustee Penning. Aye. Okay, the Good motion curious. is approved. We are adjourned to move into executive session. Uh, we would ask everyone other than the Board of Trustees to please uh, leave the room momentarily. Thank you. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah. going to ask uh, Dr. Allen. All right, we're moving back into the public session of the audit committee meeting. Want to make a finding for the record. We, the Board of Trustees of Tennessee State University, received a draft copy of findings for the FY22 audit on 3-14 of 24. A copy was emailed to me as chair on 3-13-24, and I have not had an opportunity to, to review the information. The board will not take action until I, as the chair, and TSU administration has an opportunity to, to review the findings and the full 6 22 report, along with the response from management. If necessary, I, as chair, will instruct for a call meeting to be had to review the findings and report prior to the next scheduled Board of Trustees meeting. Mm -hmm. Secretary Pendleton. You're just reading a rec finding into the record. There's no approval or anything. Okay. No. So at this point in time, we take a motion to adjourn the uh, audit committee. Yes. Uh, is there a second? Second. 
Start giving him a call the roll, please. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee McKenzie. Trustee Pat.